Today, we're taking a look at my fastest growing ant colony. This right here is my Ada Mexicana, and as you can see, they have exploded since the last episode. Now, last time I showed this colony, they were living in a two part system. Today, they have four. Hello everybody and welcome back to the Ant Holofer YouTube channel. Today the member lamp is orange, chosen by Jazz P. Thank you for the choice and today we are talking about the Ada Mexicana colony, my huge leaf cutter colony over there. Now they have grown a lot since the last episode and let's take a look at them. Like I said before, today the Ada Mexicana colony is living in a four pot system. It's actually more of a hybrid system because we also have a normal outworld in the mix. They have completely filled the first pot to the brim and I have since added the old prototype leafcutter pots as a temporary setup. My goal is to upgrade the entire setup and remake everything in the future, but for now this is their setup. And let's just start from the left and talk about their outworld. This right here is the ant store outworld and this is where I feed them. This is right now really filled up with the old sticks. Try and guess how long it's been since I cleaned them. Spoiler alert, it was 5 days ago. They eat an insane amount of leaves and I often have to feed them twice a day because I underestimate how much they require. But with a snap, it's all clean again and new leaves are once more ready to be fed. Unlike my Acromermix, this other colony pretty much accepts everything. No matter what I feed them, they just seem to eat it all. It is really insane and some leaves they don't like, but within two days they have still taken everything. It's completely insane and I love it. I've actually taken a bit of the lid off in this outworld as they kept trying to build a mini fungi under the leaves. And that is of course something we don't want, because I have to go in and take the old leaves out. By removing this little piece in the lid, there's a little bit more ventilation and they don't build any fungus in here anymore. From the outworld and going straight through the connection, we hit the new full pot. Now all of these pots are of course the Wakushi pots. And if you are purchasing anything from Wakushi, make sure to use my discount code and HOLFER in all caps for 10% of your next purchase. This is their main pot and it's also in here the queen is located and the brood as well. As you can see, the top part is really humid and it seems like whenever the fungi gets close to the walls, and they start feeding this fungi, it creates a lot more humidity as the water in the leaves get cut loose. They actually cut so much that I don't need to hydrate them anymore. And adding on that, they actually flood themselves. If I don't empty the hydration chamber every three days or so, they actually start to get flooded. How cool is that? Not only do I not have to hydrate them, the leaves have so much condensation and water that I actually have to take water out. That is something I never saw coming. And for those thinking why the water is all brown, this is due to the mesobarbers escaping and living in the chamber. I'm not sure what they did, but they definitely done something that's not supposed to happen. Moving back towards the T connector, we move over towards the old prototypes. For those wondering what these connectors are, they are from a German ant store called Sim Ants. Starting with going left, we have the old prototype pot that is now a new extra fungi pot. In here, the new fungi is slowly growing larger. This actually took a lot longer than I expected to make them grow a new fungi. Twice I took a little bit of their main fungi and put in here. And over the next day and a half, the ants simply relocated the fungi back into the main chamber. But after around three weeks of this pot being connected, the ants started relaxing inside this pot. And that was where I saw the opportunity to once more try to add a little bit of fungi. They still didn't build on the fungi, but they didn't relocate it either. And after I temporarily fed the colony inside this pot, they finally started building the new fungi after almost one month. 
after the old pot was added. I find it super interesting to actually observe the colony growing this fungi, as every day I come in the fungi just seem to have grown a bit more. I don't yet see any brood in here, but they may just wait for the fungi to grow a little bit more, or perhaps I'm just blind and can't see it. Going over to the last pot, we have the trash pot. Now this was actually meant to be a third fungi pot, but after the acromermics relocated, I tried to clean it, but I just couldn't get the old fungi debris away. And the day after I added this pot to the system, they relocated all of that trash from the outworld into this pot. Now I haven't touched that trash pile for almost five months, and I'm fairly happy because this pile isn't that big in my eyes. Depending on how soon I will get the new setup, I will either disconnect this pot, try to clean it and hopefully make it a fungi pot, or just wait for the new setup to replace everything. And that has been a look around that new setup, and it is just insane to think how quick these girls are growing. However, after the first and the main fungi started to hit the walls, they have started cutting a little bit less as they only can feed the little small fungi and do repairs on the big main fungi. It definitely has slowed their growth a little bit down, but again, I'm hoping the new setup will come soon. Looking at the main fungi pot, there is some quite large majors starting to emerge. They are insanely cool and they are not even the largest cast of workers they will produce. It's insane, although I don't see them do much yet, but by the fact that the smaller majors only now have started to go out in the outworld and cut nearly two months after I saw them the first time, I'm guessing it'll be a little while before I start seeing these small giants foraging the outworld. But just looking around the colony, there's just so many small workers. They are just everywhere. This is their main pot, and it's insanely busy at all times. I'm almost tempted to say that this is now my largest colony in numbers, as the inside of this fungi is even more filled. Regarding the brood, I never see any eggs, but a few times I see some very large larvae or pupae being transported from one part of the fungi to another part of the fungi. I want to say I know where the queen is, but I have no idea. A few weeks back she was spotted going on the outside of the fungi, probably to relocate to a new queen chamber, but I didn't see where she ended up relocating. Now for the next bit of the video, I really want to hear your opinions about this. I personally think these are small fungi flowers. I often see workers grab them and go around with them and go inside the fungi with them. They fit the description of being small white flowers. And before you say it, I know this actually isn't a real flower, but it's just easier to say it like that. And I'm almost sure that that is what we are looking at. For those who don't know what these flowers are, this is the way of the fungi saying thank you for feeding me. These ants simply pick the flower up and feed it to the larvae and to the queen and makes the entire colony grow even more and also becoming vegan. They don't need any water because they get it from the leaves, they don't need any sugar because they get it from the leaves and they don't need any protein because they get the protein from feeding the fungi and in return small protein alike flowers emerges for them to pick up. How cool is that? It's my vegan ant colony. Same of course goes with the Acromermics, they are also my vegan ant colony. To be honest, I just can't understand how well they have been doing since I got them. Back when Ants Antic sent me, they got lost in the post for 8 days, arriving with zero alive fungi. But thanks to some quick thinking from Ants Antic, Donor Fungi was quickly here and look how well they are doing today. It's mind blowing. Now as I'm feeding them pretty much 24 or 7 because I want them to grow fast, I can't really do a proper time lapse like I did with the Acromermix, but here you go, a time lapse of the ants eating the leaves. Now for today's little time lapse, I decided to give them some leaves that I actually don't know the name of because I haven't scanned them, but the ants really seem to like them. I also got them some elder that they really like at the moment, some bramble, and of course some privet. 
and straight away they went insanely crazy. They both went for the privet, for the new unknown leaf, for the bramble and not too much for the elder. But it's still insane that only in so little hours there were just leaves everywhere. And especially from this angle, I just can't believe how many leaves that are all over this fungi. What I don't understand is they keep feeding this massive fungi even though it's not growing anymore. I don't know if it's just maintenance or what they do. So if you have any idea why they're feeding this fungi that isn't growing, let me know in the comments. I personally just think it's because they maintain it. It is insane how many ants that are always roaming the outworld. So many ants always relaxing, so many ants always cutting, and so many ants always transporting leaves back and forward. I love this colony so much and I can't wait to see them in the new setup. Hopefully sooner rather than later. And I know a lot of you are thinking, what is this setup? Uh, well, Wakushi will start developing the next generation of setups. And already now I have some interesting ideas in mind that hopefully I will be able to do very soon. This colony has just taken me and I love them. They are so fast growing and there's always something happening inside the colony. I almost hate that they are right next to my PC because I often end up looking at them instead of editing. They are so distracting as there's always so much stuff going on inside the pots. Now, if you are wondering where I got this colony from, they are from Ants Antic. I saw it located in the UK and I got them around seven months ago. If you want to see a full playlist, um, there is a playlist maybe up there if I remember, but else you can just search Ada Mexicana and Hollifer and you will be sure to find them. Now also, there is so much stuff always happening with the colony and I don't do a video on them every single week. However, if you would like a lot more content on them, I have a bonus YouTube channel. It's called Ann Holifer Extra, link in the description. And on that channel, I make a lot of shorts and I almost post a video about them every day because they're so insane. If you also just want a lot more behind the scenes and how all my colonies are doing, uh, regular updates, uh, you can go follow the Ann Holifer Extra YouTube channel as there's a lot more unprofessional videos, but just updates of how all my colonies are doing. But yeah, only seven months ago since I received this colony from Ants Antic, it's insane it's only been that little time. And perhaps already now they are my biggest colony in numbers. With that being said, that has been it for this video. Now let's just get all of the members up. This video is perhaps a little bit shorter than I'd really like yeah, because there's a lot to say. But I'm currently in the UK at Ancon and next Sunday will hopefully be a vlog about Ancon. But thanks to all the members and a special thanks to our seven Holifer family members. Medical Car Case number 9, Ants Norway, Antscapes, Victor D, Simon, Casper and Kai. Thank you to all the family members and thank you for watching it to the end of the video. Also thanks to the regular members of course. But I want to ask you, do you have Ada? Would you like Ada? Or do you think they're a little bit too insane? Let me know in the comments down below. And yeah, that has been it for this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Become a member today. If you like. And I will see you all in another video. Bye!